Would you like to know how to reproduce a large painting onto a small canvas so that you can give it as a gift, send in the mail, or place on a smaller wall in your home? I'll show you that coming right up. So this is a painting I did of my cousin Nancy. I did that from a, a photograph and I love this painting and my cousin loves it as well. So uh, it's an all on canvas. It's a really large painting. It's been in my home for over, over 10 years. But recently uh, my cousin's been in the hospital and I really wanted to do something special for her. So I reproduced the large canvas onto a small canvas. So um, I'm really happy to have painted this for her. Um, I just wanna show you briefly how I used a very simple technique to uh, you know to be able to do this and most importantly I just want to um, just send this to her as soon as possible so that she can receive it put it on her wall and uh, yeah share something precious together so let's get started make sure to create a nice atmosphere light a scented candle so that you feel comfortable starting your painting so the first step is to start from a photograph and I took a photograph of the large painting and I placed it on a small canvas. I'm gonna be using similar colors that I prepared. Uh, just three brushes, a little bit of paper towels and my water because I'm working with acrylics. I have a carbon paper and my photograph that I am transferring onto a small canvas. Just make sure you go over all your lines and that um, your image is dark enough for you to see through uh, some darker colors. If uh, like in this case, I'm painting with red. So I just want to have my lines quite dark. So I think that you'll agree with me uh, in doing this exercise of painting a small canvas being inspired by such a large canvas. I'm not trying to reproduce exactly the same painting. What I'm after is the emotion in the painting, the feeling. When you look at uh, this woman, who's my cousin, uh, sitting on a bench, fixing her shoe, her scarf is blowing in the wind, her hair is brushing her face and, and blowing in the wind as well. Those dark sunglasses on her head makes it look like, you know, really French and those pointy shoes, again, really French. So I'm reproducing an emotion on canvas inspired by a large painting. So, um, of course, it's gonna, it, you know, it's gonna be different, but as you look at it at first glance, it is the same composition on a smaller canvas. So I just wanted to, you know, tell you that because if you want to reproduce uh, a small canvas inspired by a large painting, uh, you just really want to observe it first and look at what makes you uh, really love that painting. What is special? Little things that your eye goes towards and um, you know try to uh, give your own rendition your own interpretation of those small details that are creating uh, an emotion or something like that so here um, I went ahead and covered most of the painting because um, I'm using a technique of removal of the paint instead of doing the background outlining everything I went over uh, pretty much everything. I just left the face and the hair, but uh, now I'm just removing some of some of the the paint on the legs and the arm. And you know the reason why I'm doing this is because when I looked at the painting, I didn't see necessarily uh, like the silhouette separate from the background it was to me it was kind of all one so by using it the removal of, of some of that paint and using different 
um, thickness and almost doing this watercolor treatment it you know it's speaking for me again it's I'm looking to create an emotion more than you know just giving the exact same treatment and of course the the large painting is again a an all on canvas so we're working with different mediums here but the feel I'm already really loving the painting just because of the emotion and the little details that I made sure were very visible and uh, contrasting on on the painting so I'm doing the scarf right now blowing in the wind using the same um, kind of purple gray which I'll mix in a minute you don't have to keep the same colors I was as I was saying earlier give your own interpretation but you know when you're gonna quickly glance at the small painting and the large one they are very similar but I used you know I mixed the colors uh, you know from from acrylics inspired by an oil treatment so it's very different but really you need to have fun with what you're doing it's if it's for a client and you're reproducing a small canvas of a painting that's not yours um, you know it's as an artist you want to give it your own twist you want to incorporate your own style in there if you're reproducing your own work it's different you know so um, I think the key here is um, to have the proportion and the composition that's very important that's gonna play a big role in giving that feel of uh, the emotion on, on the canvas, the spatial uh, details of the painting. Also, don't feel like you, you know, you're in a box. Like you can't um, vary some of some of the paintings, some of, of the brush strokes, and some of the colors. If if you wanted to, um, if you want to change something from the painting you're trying to reproduce, um, I think at the end of the day, what's important is how you feel about the work that you're doing. Um, I don't think we're trying to copy or give an exact rendering of an artwork. I think the the goal here is to take a large piece of art that is either yours or uh, something that a picture that you take in a museum at an exhibit something that someone wants you to do for them and uh, just give it your own feel give it your own treatment and add your own style to it. A, s a large painting is always so different because when you paint on a large canvas it's you know you can really let go of those brush strokes and and do a lot of texturing and layering and I don't know if you're like me but when I paint on a small canvas I feel a little bit more to be more careful so uh, you know I think it's something that's important to uh, just be careful of not feeling uptight and tense in your shoulders even though you're painting on a small surface so if if for you um, you know you want to take you want to pause in between some of the steps have a cup of tea uh, just go for a walk just don't get too tense up uh, you know in your shoulders I think it's important for the whole outcome of your painting I'm working on the little black dress and uh, just following the outlines.
I changed the length of the dress. Just made it a little bit more, um, almost like 50s, like more Audrey Hepburn. That's what this painting remind me of. Actually, my cousin reminds me of Audrey Hepburn and I know she loves Audrey Hepburn and the style and the fashion. So I think she'll like that. So I did a little mistake here. I, I just tried to do the shadow on top and I didn't like it. So what I did is, um, and I think, <laughs> don't worry, this is not gonna stay like that, okay. Uh, I know it looks pretty bad right now, but it was actually fun, okay. Uh, I just dripped a lot of water over that shadow and made it more watercolor, more more um like very intuitive uh, and uh, i'm telling you uh, maybe it looks bad right now because of the camera the angle and the light i'm not sure but it, it's gonna turn out awesome so i'm dripping some more paint right now i painted all around my frame i think if you work on a small canvas you can do things like that because you can move it around and uh, i painted all around the um the the frame so it's it's looking really neat um with those drips of water i'm adding more yellow to the background i gotta admit though i, I was scared for a little bit when i did that shadow i was like Okay, the shadow goes under the feet, not over her head. It kind of changed the composition of the painting. And that's one thing that you want to be careful of when you do, when you reproduce a large canvas onto a small canvas, keep the uh, composition and uh, the proportion are very important. Okay, so her hair is um, brown. My cousin's hair is kind of brown and in that picture she has uh, highlights. But I decided to go a little bit red because in the painting I actually did a little bit of a hint of red. And naturally she has some red highlights in her hair. So we're kind of playing right now with some bright yellow. But as I said, I'm looking at the large canvas um, color and I know the hair is a little darker but you know this is a representation this is me having fun with you know doing the doing a smaller version of it so it's I it can always darken it with a little bit more brown so that's why it looks really bright right now but you'll see it's all gonna work out here's that strand of hair that to me is very important because it's that wind that's blowing her scarf and uh, you know her hair to me that's the emotion on in the painting and and it's very important for me to make it a, a bolder contrast and that's why i think the light hair against the dark background really um you know portrays that and i'm having fun and the painting's gonna turn out great so it's all good a little bit of highlights in the scarf it's important to build as you go. Um, layering in the painting is very important. I usually wait until the end to add my white highlights, but um, in this case, I just needed to just brighten up her scarf. I just needed to kind of see it happen sooner. So I'm just playing with the highlights a little bit earlier than I usually do. But uh, I gotta say, I'm really happy about how the background is drying right now and giving me this really cool texturing and watery effect. It's it's, it's all part of adding the emotion and the feeling of the painting, the feel of the painting.
You know, adding the last details of the painting is truly uh, just a pleasure and I'm taking my time with a very, very small brush, adding, um, you know, like the reflection in the sunglasses, more little strands of hair, uh, just blowing across her face. It was so much fun to create this painting. I just added a little bit of yellow um, under her chin for the shadow, a little bit of uh, like golden to her skin with, with a Q-tip, you know, <laughs> tools don't have to cost a lot of money. I love using a Q-tip for the last little, um, you know, touches. Um, and of course the small brush for the shadow on the left side. I love the little button nose and this is small. Okay, this is really small. So um, I'm really happy how this turned out. I am the type of artist who prefer, I prefer to work on a large canvas, but I gotta tell you, I'm looking at my finished piece and um, I love her. Um, I did uh, add a little bit more uh, at the end. I, I wanted to um, uh, add more shadowing under her feet and I um, kind of thought the this uh, seat, the uh, little seat that she's uh, almost sitting on, <laughs> it was longer, it was like not proportioned, not well lined, aligned with her feet. So I transformed part of the seat um, to be a shadow. So that was really at the end when I stepped back from my painting, I knew something was off and by adding the shadow, it just totally worked. And I just love that last little part of it where I just added the shadow and transformed part of the seat as the shadow as well. So I darkened a little bit more of the left bottom side of the canvas to add a little bit more drama. I love her. I can't wait to send her to my cousin. And uh, I'm gonna ask her to take a picture of her expression and take a, a, a few photos with her painting. I really hope you enjoyed my video. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave me a comment. I would really appreciate that. And hit the little bell so that you get my next notification. I try to post a video every week. I have different tutorials and things like that. So, hey, I hope you'll subscribe and I hope to see you soon. Bye.